If you spent time on base at Camp Lejeune prior to 1988 and developed any of these cancers or suffered any of these injuries, you may be eligible for significant financial compensation. Leaking underground tanks contaminated the drinking water with benzene and other highly carcinogenic chemicals. There have been numerous reported cases of exposed personnel developing cancer and other serious health conditions. Call Camp Lejeune Victims to discuss your case now. 800-828-1689. We are here as new ET correspondents. I'm Kevin Jonas. Hello. <laughs> and I'm Frankie Jonas. Monday on ET, a Jonas bonus. Kevin and Frankie talk their claim to fame and air out some dirty laundry. Calling me old again. No, but you're not cringy because right, of your boomer. age. <laughs> Sounds like my kids. Okay, pop. Happening now. San Antonio police investigating two double murders four days apart. Coming up, we'll tell you what investigators are saying after two bodies were found today on the northeast side. The city of Kirby without water today. What happened and what residents are saying about it. Of course, more triple digit days on the way. I'll be back to tell you just how hot it's going to get this weekend, how the humidity is going to make it feel as well, and when we could see a few pop up showers. See you in a bit. News at five starts right now. First at five, two deaths inside a San Antonio hospital believed to be the result of a murder suicide involving an elderly man and his wife. This happened inside Methodist Hospital in the medical center. San Antonio police say a hospital employee found the couple in one of the hospital rooms this morning. Both appear to be in their 80s and died from their gunshot wounds. Right now, we're working to learn their names. It looks like we're trying to play you a sound bite right now. Give that a few seconds, I guess. Detectives believe uh, the husband, again, a male in his late 80s, at some point in the morning, unknown what time, shot his wife who was a, fa a patient there at the hospital and then turned the gun on himself. In a statement that was released just a few moments ago, Methodist Healthcare says that they are deeply saddened by this morning's events and extend thoughts and prayers to the couple's family. They add that the hospital will remain open and continue to provide care for the patients while also providing counseling for its staff. New at five, two double murders in a span of just four days. But are they related? That's what San Antonio police are trying to figure out. The most recent discovery happening this morning on Perrin Bidal, the victims believed to be two men who were experiencing homelessness. RJ Marquez shares what we know and speaks to one woman who lives nearby. San Antonio police are investigating two different crime scenes involving four victims within a half mile of each other. Communications received the call that they were two bodies uh, that were deceased at the location. Officers responded today to the 10,400 block of Perrin Beidel near Wurzbach Parkway. They found two bodies in an open area behind a gas station. Both had been shot. Um, one individual appeared to be in his late 50s. Uh, can't tell on the other one. It does look like they're homeless. On Tuesday, police responded to another double murder across the street in the 3900 block of Perrin Central. One man was found dead in a car and the other man was found dead outside the vehicle. It's weird because this is very uh, a very nice area. Belinda Sanchez works at a hair salon in between both crime scenes. She says they often see people experiencing homelessness in the area, but most are there to find work at a nearby employment agency. It's not weird that we see homeless people because we know that obviously they're coming to look for a job. Maybe they find a place to sleep close by and then they run into trouble. Yeah, John Paul and Ursula back out here live at the scene. Um, if you could see behind me, there is a red fence and directly on the other side of that fence is where police found those two bodies earlier today. Now, Chief Louis McMahon is telling us that it, they are not sure or they cannot determine at the moment if these two cases are connected or linked in any way. He said that detectives are just starting their investigation, but that is definitely something that they're looking into. Reporting live from the Northeast side, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. Definitely something to keep an eye on. And we now know the name of the man killed in a bike crash last night. He's 61-year-old Manuel Mendoza. He died around 10 last night following a hit and run on South Rocio Street and Saunders Avenue. It's on the west side. At last check, the person driving the truck that killed Mendoza has not been found. Based on surveillance video from the area, invest investigators believe that the driver was not only speeding, but also ran a stop sign. A San Antonio man has been indicted on a murder charge for a crime that happened back in 2016. Take a look at Jorge Rivera. He is accused of the murder of Javier Soto. 
Riviera was arrested back in April during a traffic stop. Several undocumented migrants were found in that truck. At that time, the San Antonio Police Department said during questioning, Rivera also confessed to the 2016 murder. If convicted, he faces up to life in prison. A fatal shooting case involving an SAPD officer will not go to trial. Officer Steven Ramos was no billed by a Bear County grand jury. Last year, he shot and killed 57-year-old John Peña Montes. SAPD records say that Montes threatened to kill himself while holding a knife outside of a home and then advanced toward his common-law wife. Shortly after officers arrived, they said that they lunged at him and attempted to deploy his taser twice. Ramos then shot and killed Montes. President Biden taking a big step to combat the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade and sending it back to the states to decide. Today, he signed an executive order that will enforce existing access to abortion medications and emergency contraception, protect patients' privacy, and ensure pregnant women in need of emergency care can get it. I wish it had not come to this. This is the fastest route available. Cannot allow an out of control Supreme Court working in conjunction with extremist elements of the Republican Party to take away freedoms and our personal autonomy. What we're witnessing wasn't a constitutional judgment. It was an exercise in raw political power. At least 14 states have stopped access to nearly all abortion services. 12 more states are expected to severely restrict abortion access. President Biden calling on pro-choice advocates to take their anger to the polls. He says two more pro-choice senators and a pro-choice House are needed if Congress is to codify Roe v. Wade as a federal law. And Kirby residents woke up to an unwelcome surprise today as their faucets ran dry. An issue with the main water well cut off water for the entire city for much of the day. Garrett Berger joins us from True Vision Church on Ackerman, where the city has been distributing water. Garrett, what can you tell us? Well, the city manager has just told us recently that they've gotten the backup well up and running, and they're trying to flow water into the system so it should be out uh, service up and running for residents soon. But because it was under low pressure, the uh, residents are going to need to boil water before consumption or even stick to bottled water. So what was the issue in the first place? As it turns out, there were multiple. The city manager told us a motor burned up in the primary well and an unreported leak in the system drained all of the backup water the city had in storage. And the city's backup well, which would normally have taken over, was already down for electrical repairs. But they've since got that working. Now, in the meantime, residents have been coming here to True Vision Church and before that to City Hall to get jugs and bottles of water expressing varying degrees of frustration and acceptance along the way. I've been running around getting jugs to get water and then I come to Kirby and all they want to give you is this. This is not going to last all day. It's outrageous. I know it, it sucks, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, as long as they take care of it, I don't see the problem. Now, the city had been restricting water distribution to a one gallon jug per household. Now, the gallon limit still applies over here at True Vision Church, but they're allowing people to come back through as many times as they need to. And they'll be out here to distribute water throughout the night. Now, amid its water issues, the city also suffered a spam attack on its phones. Now, that required them to be taken offline for several hours, but the city's phone lines are now back open. Live in Kirby, I'm Garrett Berger. KSAT 12 News. And definitely feeling the heat outside again today on this Friday, 100 for the high temperature. So that's our 30th 100 degree day so far this year. And every day this July has been triple digits. The average high, of course, being 94. Uh, right now, for the most part, right around Century Mark. Ward and Del Rio, 107. 103 in shirts, 104 Lavernia, 100 in Santa Jim's work wood shop in Windcrest and Bulverde, 100 degrees as well. As we go through the evening hours, warm, but a bit of a breeze. Southeasterly wind up to 25 miles per hour after sunset. We're going to crank up the heat even more this weekend. We'll talk about how hot it'll get and how hot it'll feel with the humidity along with when a few showers could develop coming up.
Thank you, Adam. And we have a reminder, the city of San Antonio opening up cooling centers this weekend to help people battle the heat that Adam was just talking about. There are several locations all around the county. We have them listed on KSAT.com, as well as some tips on what to look out for when it comes to heat-related illness. It can sneak up on you. The city's also reminding people to limit outdoor activity, stay hydrated, check on the elderly, and of course, never leave a child or a pet inside a car. And when it is this hot outside in South Texas, many people flock to the lakes and the rivers trying to cool off. Unfortunately, some of the most popular spots are dealing with low water levels this year because of the lack of rain. That's right. Meteorologist Justin Horn was at Guadalupe River this morning where things are looking really too dry, more dry than normal this time of the year. We're here along the Guadalupe River. In fact, I'm standing in the middle of the Guadalupe River and you can see there is a little water here, but not a lot. And there's not a lot of flow and that's part of the problem. We're here in Kamal County near Spring Branch where the flow is close to zero. Some areas of stagnant water and th there is some water here. There's still water in this river. You can still come out and swim and enjoy it. But the drought conditions really are starting to take a toll. We're noticing that there is still some flow upstream in places like Kerrville and Comfort. But as you get closer to Spring Branch and closer to Canyon Lake, that flow really starts to fall off. Now, on the other side of Canyon Lake, because of the releases, there is still pretty good flow around New Braunfels. So if you have plans to tube uh, in New Braunfels, Guadalupe, or Kamau River, it, it looks fine. The flow is just going to be uh, a little bit slow. The drought, again, is really starting to take a toll in our area rivers and streams, and it looks like things could get a little bit worse before it gets better. Reporting in Comal County, Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News. Now we're taking a look at Transguide at 90 and 36, where traffic looks to be moving pretty smoothly. It's pretty good for 5 o'clock. Everybody's trying to get home after a rush hour, get ready for the weekend. Now, looking ahead uh, at what's going to be happening on the roads this weekend and whether there will be any trouble spots is our traffic authority, Stephen Cabasos. As we are getting ready to drive off into the weekend, we want to make sure that you are prepared for the construction that is in our area. So let's take a look and find out what's going to be taking place. Loop 1604 on the north central side of San Antonio. This has been ongoing since Wednesday, July 6. This is camera work that we're going to be seeing taking place. That should be wrapping up on Saturday, July 9th. That is going to be for our overnight commuters, 9 in the evening until 5 in the morning. During that time, you can expect a right westbound Loop 1604 main lanes to be impacted from trail Crest Street. It's a theater boulevard, but the work is going to continue over here off I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio. Some survey work will be taking place. That will actually has already been going on for, since Tuesday, July 5th. That should wrap on Sunday, July 10th. So 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Again, for those overnight commuters, the right southbound lane closure between Judson Road and O'Connor Road is where you can expect to see those closures. One last jump here to 281. We talk about it all the time. Uh, we are going to see bridge work taking place Monday, July 11th, 8 in the evening to 8 in the morning, full closure of the Overlook Parkway intersection. Grab those phones, open your camera app, and you can scan this QR code. That's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page that has a list of the current closures that are taking place throughout the month of July. So head over there for more details. How hot is it outside? So hot, even the walk to your car is grueling. And getting into your car to cool off, oof, that's painful as well once you've gotten in. Still ahead, we're talking temps and what you need to know about cooling off your car this summer. Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom. Remember those images that stirred national controversy of those mounted Border Patrol agents using their horses to push back Haitian migrants? Well, nine months later, the investigation has wrapped up with several findings, including threats of force and putting a child at risk. Tonight at 6, Alicia Barrera explains the corrective actions established by Customs and Border Protection. We'll walk you through that. Plus, we're heading back out to the river, but this time it's the Frio at Garner State Park. For years, it's been a popular spot for families to get together or take a day trip. But now there's not much river to the river. RJ Marquez talks with a longtime park business owner and employee about why they say that should not stop you from taking your next getaway to Garner. That and more tonight on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. You know the feeling. You open the car door on a day like today and you get blasted with hot air. 
Oh, what your car needs is a quick cool down. So 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moore shows us the fastest way to do that without wasting your $4 a gallon gas. When your car feels like an oven, you need quick cooling. So skip the remote start. Consumer Report says it won't cool much and you'll just waste gas. Movement is your friend. Cars air conditioning works much better when you're actually driving because the faster the engine turns, the faster the AC compressor runs, which lets the system cool more effectively. So here's the best way to cool the car quickly. Start driving and turn on the air conditioner. Open all of the windows for about 15 seconds. Next, crank the fan. Once the cold air starts flowing through the vents, roll up the front windows. But keep the rear windows cracked for another 15 or so seconds to pull the cold air to the back of the car. Adjust the AC temperature to its lowest setting and make adjustments to the fan speed and direction to keep you comfortable. This will actually make the AC efficient, will dry out the air more, and can save some fuel. If you have passengers in the back seat, go ahead and turn off the recirculation mode. That will keep the air in the back seat from getting too stale and too hot. Have a newer car with an auto start stop system? You may want to turn it off if you can. The feature saves fuel by cutting the engine when you're stopped, but it may also shut off the AC compressor, and you don't want that. Finally, be sure your cabin air filter is clean. A dirty filter prevents optimal airflow, and that's not cool. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh, we learned a lot. I've been doing it all wrong. <laughs> the self-start. Yeah. As soon as I do that, I need a pool like that at Six yeah. Flags. They're doing it right. On a Friday, that's yeah. how you celebrate Friday. I want to be in the panhandle right there. <laughs> the deeper part, the panhandle, yes. I'll take any part of that Texas right now. Oh, uh, the zero entry, nope, I'm going right to the deep part in the panhandle. Thank you very much. We need the relief, and you're going to want a waterway or pool to hop into this weekend. Let's just rip the Band-Aid off. 104 is what we're expecting tomorrow. 105 is our forecast for Sunday, and then even on Monday, 104 degrees. So it's not just the weekend, but even into the early part of next week before our temperatures start to trend downward a little bit by the middle of next week. So we're going to be dealing with the heat high, and as you can see here, shown in yellow, record challenging heat Sunday and Monday we should meet or exceed the record high temperatures for those days. So let's get right to it. How hot is it out there right now? New Braunfels 102, Stinson 102 degrees along with Divine, Hondo 103, Canyon Lake 96, Bernie Stage Airfield 97, Bandera 102. But <laughs> look at the bigger picture, by and large, triple digits. Del Rio officially 104, Catula and Laredo, the hot spots as usual, 106 degrees. Now let's factor in the humidity. There isn't a whole lot of humidity out there, but there's enough to tack on a few more degrees for the feels like temperature. So this is the feels like the heat index feels like 105 in Hondo, feels like 103 here in San Antonio. So basically the next couple of afternoons, well, next several afternoons, the afternoon temperature at a couple of degrees and that's your feels like temperature. This is what we're expecting for tomorrow morning. For the most part, upper 70s along the Rio Grande, closer to 80 degrees. That's at sunrise tomorrow. Then by the afternoon, about four o'clock is when we should hit our high temperature. 107 Carrizo Springs and Eagle Pass, 108 Catula, Del Rio up to 106. I mean, all of us at or above 100 degrees. I mean, even Lake Hills, Myco area, 104, Castroville, 105. You get the idea. It's going to be even hotter tomorrow uh, than it was the past couple of days. And when you factor in that humidity, here you go. Here's the heat index, this top number, the feels like temperature. Could feel like it's up to about 107 to 108 around town for a few hours in the afternoon, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. As for rain chances, there's a little bit of hope. Nothing significant, but even right now in the hill country, a few little isolated pop-up showers, especially Ed Edwards County and southwestern Kerr County. These are insignificant. I mean, it's nice to see something out there better than nothing, but we do have some chances into the weekend. Let's talk about it really quickly here with our future cast tomorrow afternoon, about a 10% chance, mainly north of San Antonio. Even future cast is plotting just a few showers.
showers possible. Then we get into Sunday and another sunny day for the most part, but into the afternoon we give it a 20% chance. We think we could have slightly more favorable conditions for a few more pop up showers and that's about it. I mean, we're talking 10 to 20% chance here and there in the days ahead. Here's a quick look at the forecast tomorrow. A lot of sunshine will already be 92 or 96. I should say by the noon hour and then maxing out in the in the low 100s about 104 to 105 by Wednesday a little bit cooler 99. Okay, uh, we just got to wait till that 105 is scary. <laughs> You'll be all right. I was out there today. It felt like 108. <laughs> those are uh, basketball numbers and it, it does now, look like that. Yeah, yeah, all, those, uh, scores. <laughs> all those new uh, NBA faces uh, getting some action today. Well, it's the young guns and let's see how they're doing their first game since they arrived in Las Vegas. First hip off the summer league. We'll let you know how they're doing in their first game out and who are the top high school football teams in class 4A today coming up. Josh Primo and the Young Gun Spurs in their first action of the Summer League in Las Vegas, taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers this afternoon. Spurs fall behind by as many as 10 early, but thanks to the 25th pick, Blake Wesley, they come back charging. Wesley driving, turns the corner, and then check out the reverse layup there for the finish. Wesley again running down the hill to the bucket for the hoop and the harm to get the Spurs within five after one. Second quarter now, Josh Primo, the three from the corner, puts the Spurs up on top by one. Then it's Wesley again. This time he drains the baseline jumper, and it's a 15-1 to one Spurs run to put the Spurs up by six. Seven. Wesley with 15 first half points has headed the school board to see where they are now. They're going to have to do another comeback because in the fourth quarter, they're down 80 to 64. In light of the fact the Spurs have traded DeJounte Murray to the Atlanta Hawks and allow Lonnie Walker the four to sign with the Lakers, it leaves Keldon Johnson as the only the face of the franchise, but the new leader of the team. Now, Johnson is about to start his fourth season in silver and black, and is coming off a career year playing in 75 games. Starting 74, he averaged 17 points, 6.1 rebounds, 2.1 assists, all career best. So with both DeJounte and Lonnie Walker gone, does Keldon now take more of a leadership role? Uh, definitely 100%. I feel like, um, I mean, I kind of been in the system the longest, so I feel like, uh, you know, just, just leading these guys, telling tell them the ins and outs, and, uh, you know, we all we all gonna have learning moments in the upcoming years, so uh, you know it's gonna be up and down. But uh, just staying even keeled throughout that, and you know continue to be myself through the thick and thin. All right, today's game aside, here's a look at the rest of their schedule. Sunday will be against the Warriors at 6:30. Monday against the Rockets at six, and Thursday against the Hawks uh, against the Spurs at 2 p.m. The Bernie Greyhounds emerge as the top rated team in Class 4A Division 1 in the state. And according to Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, it's after the Greyhounds finished 9-3 last year. But they are not only the only team in our area making the top 25. Bernie is joined by Canyon Lake at 16, Pleasant and Eagles at number 25. In Division 2, we have four teams in the top 25. It starts with both the Quero Gobblers and the Wimberley Texans, who are always two of the top teams in Class 4A, and challenge for the state title each year after finishing 13-2 and 10-3, and and respectively. But they're the only teams in our area in the top 25 in Division 2. So Division 1 first, Bernie, Canyon Lake, and Pleasanton. Division 2 will be joined by Quero and Wimberley, along with Navarro, and Divine is also in that top 25 ranking. More tonight coming up on the Night Beat. Lots of uh, stuff to keep an eye on. Love hearing the football action already coming up. Getting ready for go. August here. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. that, Greg. And we'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is next.